public defender is a public servant employed by the community and responsible for giving legal aid without cost to any person who seeks it and is financially unable to employ private counsel. It is his duty to defend those accused of crime until they are proved guilty by law. But that doesn't mean that his work is always appreciated. Sometimes it's quite the opposite. As when the public defender's office defended a man named Murphy, charged with assault with intent to commit murder. He lived near Pine Rocks, a mountain area. Generally a peaceful place, except for that day when the deer hunting season opened. All right, get out of here. Well, hello, Mr. Murphy. No, hunting on this property. It's posted. Signs all over the place. Didn't you see him? Sure, but then what's the matter? Can't you read? Well, Mr. Murphy, these are these are friends of ours. They're from the city. Yeah. Woke me up this morning. Sounds like the Battle of Bunker Hill. I don't trust greenhorns with guns. Last opening day, some city dude shot my cow. Well, look, we're all members of the Hunter Farmers Cooperative. We'll be responsible for any damage. Besides, we'll pay you a fee for letting us hunt. I don't want any fee. All the game on this property belongs to me. Mr. Murphy, that's a moot question. The authorities seem to think the game belongs to the public. That's why the state sends out wardens to regulate and protect wildlife. Wildlife eats my grain, don't they? Tramples my gardens, drinks my water. All the game on this property belongs to me. How come we have to buy a hunter's license then? Oh, look, let, let, let's cool down, shall we? Look, Mr. Murphy, is it okay if we unload our guns if we cross over to Jawbone Canyon? That's not your property, is it? You can go around by the road. Uh, it's four miles around that way. Then stand on the highway and shoot into the bushes the way the rest of the greenhorns do. I don't need a license to shoot on my property, deer or trespassers. Come on, fellas, let's get out of here. here. I thought your stepfather picked up the bank foreclosure on this property. He did. Well, it's not Murphy's property at all. That's right. He's a hard one to convince, and that wasn't the time to try, looking down the barrel of that 30-30. Uh, come on, let's beat our way up this draw. Maybe we can circle around him. Where's your father? He ain't in the store. Well, father's back at the cabin. Why? Hi, honey. Fine help with the dishes you are. That's no excuse. I had to help Harry celebrate. He got a beautiful buck. Did you see it outside? Uh-huh. What's that? No. How's that? All right. Why wouldn't he be? He's drying your dishes, in fact. Mm. Well, I took care of something for him today that he should have done six months ago, so we're even. Phil, what are you talking about? Is something wrong? No, no, just something legal. I had old man Murphy served with an eviction notice. Eviction notice? Mm-hmm. Hey, Dora, how about a game of cards? All right, where's Emily? <laughs> I thought this was deer season. It's a midget deer. Meet Mr. B.J. Eubanks, taxidermist extraordinary. No, we don't want any. We've got enough horns hanging all over the mantle already. Honey, um, did Dad hear from old man Murphy? What? Madam, my work is admired all over the state. When people see my rattlesnakes, <laughs> they jump a mile. Yes, I'm sure, Mr. Eubanks. Oh, I mean, I didn't mean to offend you. But my husband... Well, he has more trophies than the Smithsonian Institute. And when I offer this beautiful gray fox for only $25, I'm sure you'll snap at the chance. Uh, don't play with his tail, please, sir. Now, this beautiful object will be the sign of your of all eyes, if only when you take it home, for instance. I'll buy a bottle, Doctor. Didn't know the celebration was over here. Thought it was in your cabin. I never heard such a racket. <laughs> what do you mean? There's no one there but Dad, and he's washing the dishes. Washing dishes? He's throwing them and yelling his head off at somebody. Mercy. Mercy. Oh, no. Oh, don't worry about your dad. He's holding his own. Let go of me. Let go of me, you slimy bullcat. Go on, now. Get away from me. 
Get out of here. Go on. Get out of here. You dirty. Who are you? Get out of here. Father. Father. Oh. 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 Lundquist. I should have killed you the day you set fire to my pasture land. You stole my Angus bull. And what about that fence? That fence you tore down. Father, stop it. Stole him, I said. A whole quarter mile of fence. Cut it out. Two men your age, fighting like babies. What's the matter with you? Take it easy, Dora. He just tripped, that's all. Well, come in here yelling like a banshee, and I'll show you what, what. Father, please. Take your hands off me, sonny. Someday your animus will blow up and bust you. All right, Murphy. You came over here because you saw about that eviction notice on your land. Bill, what is all this notice he's yelling about? I used to have a fence there. Now all my calves keep getting out. And you go stealing from me. Oh, for Pete's sake! Bill, wait. Mr. Murphy, that fence was down years and years ago. Yes. No one's trying to steal your land. It just isn't yours anymore. You don't even have cattle anymore. Remember? I used to have a lot of things. So they kept stealing everything from me. Murphy! Maybe I got plans. You don't know. You and them city dudes. You don't know. Come back here, you old fool. But listen to me. I'm warning you. Anybody comes straipsing up there again, they better watch out. I'm warning you. He gets mixed up sometimes. Wonder if I'm getting that old, too. Oh, of course not, Dad. You forget <laughs> it, Pop. I'll go down to the sheriff's office in the morning. Well, Murphy always blamed me for his hard luck. I guess I blamed him for my bad luck, too. And with good reason. Bill, how important is them notices? Pop, I'll explain it to you again. I helped you buy up that mortgage land. But there he sits, right in the middle of it, with private property and no hunting signs posted all over it. Why, he ran me and my party off of that land this morning. Now, if you keep on being polite to him... I ain't being soft. I hate that old goat. Well, I know how he feels. Pretty much the same as you felt a while back when you almost lost your land. But we can't subdivide that area. If he's going to sit right in the middle of it, pulling a 30-30 on every hunter that comes by, cutting off the water, starting a fight with everybody... You say he chased you off of our land with a 30-30? That's right. But don't you go getting hot under the collar about it. You let me handle it. All right, all right, Bill. You handle it. Maybe you know best. That next day, old Mr. Lundquist decided to take matters in his own hands. What brings you here? Something's happened. Mind if I take a look at your rifle? Don't own one. Game wardens as you do. Sicker rifles. Threw it away. A couple of other parties from town by here this morning. They saw you walking away from your cabin with the rifle about nine o'clock. I've been having trouble with bobcats. Bobcat got into my chickens the other night. Where is your rifle, Mr. Merkin? None of your prisoners. Leave me alone. You walked down the canyon south of here, then through the woods. No, it ain't true. Somebody else saw you running away from there. It's a lie. Ain't left the house all day. And I guess this isn't your bandana. Of course 
not. I didn't shoot Fred Lundquist. And then how do you know he was shot? You haven't been out of the house. You haven't got a phone. Is he dead? He was still alive when they took him off to the hospital. Thanks. I've just been sitting here going through some of my things. I... Oh, well. All right. I'm through with this place anyway. Let's go down to your jail. The case against Murphy was circumstantial, but still it was going to be a difficult case to handle, especially if Lundquist testified against him. But, Dad, he's guilty. You know he's guilty. He's just confused, that's all. He's getting old. Well, he wasn't confused when he threatened to kill you. I don't mean just this time. I mean all the other times. That's what we want you to tell about. He hit me once with a cross-cut saw. I still got the mark on my legs, but I never brought no charge against him. Well, you wouldn't. Couldn't very well. I hit him first with an axe handle. <laughs> oh, Dad. Dora, I'm sorry you've been so upset. And Bill, and all the nice people you brought up there. Dad, don't you understand? The reason we want you to testify is because he just has to be put away somewhere. It isn't just a fight anymore. He tried to murder you. Well, I guess that's just what I can't get through my head. I guess he always figured the world was right and he was wrong. You said that a little backwards, didn't you? No. Just too bad he couldn't have been right for once in the world wrong, that's all. But go on. Tell him I'll testify enough to swing that crazy old bird up to a telegraph pole. And he ought to be. One to 14 years, Mr. Murphy. That's the sentence that can be imposed on you. 14 years was about handled for me. 64 last December. Maybe that's what you'll get if you don't help me defend you. <laughs> so Lundquist is going to say things against me too, eh? I should have rung his neck years ago. What's that? None of your business. Only, say, did I tell you I went out that morning to shoot a bobcat? That might be some help for you. It might, but I don't think so. Huh? I understand you're a good shot. You're blame right I am. So that if you'd been aiming at an animal instead of a man, you would have hit him just as easily. There would have been something to show for it. Well? I had the warden comb the area you said you were in that morning. There was no sign of a bobcat dead or alive. No. No, I guess there wouldn't be. I'm afraid we'll have to do better than that. All right, then. Say I'm guilty. Get it over with. You mean that? Maybe I was just too stubborn to admit it. And I'm not crazy, either. I'm sorry you've been so much trouble here, young man. I plead guilty. Oh, I can't let you do it. Well, why not? One to 14 years. What do I care? I did it. I killed him. Now get out of here and leave me alone. Mr. Murphy, the law says that if you plead guilty and Fred Lundquist should die within the next year, you could be tried all over again. Murder in the first degree. Possibly the gas chamber. Oh. Then I'm not so sure I did it. Mr. Murphy, please give me something to go on. All right. You know so much about the law, you handle it. Go on. Do the whole thing. You're my defense, aren't you? I'll not say another word. The date of Murphy's trial was approaching, and I still had no defense for him. Mr. Ames, the game warden for that district, was very cooperative. Did you find anything, any evidence of bobcats? No, and I did a lot of looking around. Every square foot of that hill. Why, Murphy isn't a friend of yours. <laughs> Not so you'd notice it. In the old days, I hauled him in a half dozen times, mostly for shooting pheasant out of season, and with a rifle, which made it worse. Pretty good shot. One of the best. Give me your honest opinion. Do you think that Murphy shot Lundquist? It could have been an accident. Murphy's a stubborn old coot, but he's not bloodthirsty. And there's one thing he's been right about all the time. What's that? About that area not being good for open deer shooting. Too close and too many people. 
You know, one day I checked 237 hunters out of one road. You know how many deer they got? Six. 237 men got six deer. That isn't what you came here to tell me. I found Murphy's rifle where he hid it that day. He'd thrown it down an old mine shaft. This gun of Murphy's had just one bullet fired. Now, they must have removed a bullet from Lundquist's body at the hospital. Wouldn't that prove something? All our ballistics experts could prove whether it came from Murphy's gun or not. Except the bullet went clean through a fleshy part of Lundquist's body and was never found. Oh. Thanks anyway. Nice try. Lundquist testified at the trial, and when the case was given to the jury, he and his son-in-law left for Pine Rocks. The pheasant season had just opened, and all Bill's friends were there. The jury was still out when we left. Hear anything on the radio? No. Probably some old gal holding out for not guilty. Well, she'll see the light. They'll send him up all right. The jury deliberated four hours. I waited. It was after dark when they returned with a verdict. Hear ye, hear ye. This court is again in session. Everyone rise, please. Judge Randolph had just about decided to send the jury to a hotel for the night. When they announced they had arrived at a decision, the verdict came as quite a surprise. It was not guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. Well, how do you like that? I can't believe it. Well, if it's true, it's not going to set so well with a lot of people up here. How do you like that? I just can't believe it. What are we going to do now? I don't know. But I don't want to be caught in the middle. All I tried to do was help your dad make something of this place. Make a little money. You've done a swell job of it up till now. But the real work is just starting. What's going to happen when Murphy comes back? I don't know. All the stupid things for two intelligent, sane people to worry about. A couple of old men feuding, like hillbillies. Well, maybe he won't come back after what's happened. You don't know him, and you don't know Dad. Don't you understand? Murphy's been found innocent. He's a free man with a persecution complex. They've just opened up the door to a real killing. Where's Dad? He just came in and went to his room without a word. Mr. Bowling. Bill. Hello, Miss Dame. Evening, ma'am. I want to see your father. Hurry. Oh, he's resting. He's already heard the news. Well, there's something else. I've been talking to the sheriff's office. Look, I have to see him right now. Dad! Dad! The sheriff's office. Say, that verdict wasn't very popular with your city friends either, was it? Mm. I know, I don't blame you. The men in the store are getting all excited, but maybe it is justice. Bill, he's gone. I guess he went out the back way. Well, I've got to stick around and wait anyway. Only maybe you better know that Murphy's taken a bus from town already. What? Sheriff's deputy left the courtroom with him just to keep an eye on things, but he lost him when the bus stopped at the service station. But I wouldn't worry about it. Mr. Matthews is on his way up here. You see, we might have something new on this. Bill, we've got to find Father. I couldn't tell you in front of Ames. His gun's gone, too. Uh-oh. Hiya, fellas. We've got a visitor. I'd like to introduce Mr. Bart Matthews, public defender. Tell me, Warden, when's the season open on public defenders? I'd like to oil up my gun. Harry! Harry, can I see you a minute? Oh, sure, Bill. Honey, you stay right here. Anything we ought to know about Mrs. Bowling? I think Father's out looking for Murphy. Not guilty. And you call me a murderer? Yes. I thought you were just a hot-headed old goat once. But there you are. Look at you. Couldn't stand it because I had good luck for a change. 
Maybe I should have killed you in the days when you were making a few dollars. Ah, uh, shut up. Hey, 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 you poor you poor give me poor that gun. Get out there, you. All right, drop it, Murphy. You people don't belong here. Clear up. Hey, give me that thing. Don't you? It's all right. Nobody's hurt. I'll take that gun, Bill. All right, the hunting season's over for both of you fellows. I want you to listen to Mr. Matthews. Mr. Lundquist, Mr. Murphy didn't shoot you. He didn't even shoot at you. It was a hunting accident. I... I wasn't sure. It was a long range. And then I found Fred. I never had a shooting accident in my life. But my eyes ain't what they used to be. Mr. Murphy, you were the only man on the field that day who couldn't have done it. Huh? There was only one shot fired from your gun. And Mr. Eubanks will testify that you hit your bobcat. Because he found it, scanned it out, and mounted it. Fortunately, he found a bullet in the skull. One bullet, right between the eyes. <laughs> you hear that? And our ballistics expert says that the bullet came from Mr. Murphy's gun. So you see, when the evidence is all in, the jury is usually right. I don't know how to thank you, Mr. Matthews. You've certainly taught me a lesson. Yes, I've learned a lesson, too. And I'm willing to pay for it. Come on, let's all go down to the store and have a nice cold drink on me. Come on, Dad. I'll be along in a minute. Don't worry. Maybe I've learned a thing or two myself. Those interfering city dudes spoiled everything. I come back here tonight to beat your ears off. All right, all right. And I come up here tonight to get rid of this. You... You mean you're not going to throw me off my place? <laughs> I ain't no fool. If you left here, I wouldn't have nobody to fight with. That's right. And that's why I didn't shoot you. I tell you what. We both got a few years left. Why don't we let your kids sell off all this stuff around here? But keep this little cabin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just you and me. Then we can fight all we want to. That's it. And there'd be nobody butting in and spoiling our fun. <laughs> Mr. Matthews, I still don't understand. Father was shot. Who did it? Do you have any idea, Mr. Matthews? How many of you were out deer hunting that day? All of us here were. Too many. Well, perhaps Warden Ames can explain it better than I can. Warden? Take your group here and multiply it by a hundred, then think it over. Do you know how far a bullet can carry? Do you know what happens in these places close to town with parties in brand new red caps shooting at sounds in the brush and trees and anything that moves? Does that answer your question? Maybe we'll never know who fired that shot. Could have been one of us. Out of all this, there was another good result. At least a few hunters were taught what every good hunter should know, that indiscriminate or careless shooting can hurt more humans than animals. The case you have just seen was brought to a fair and just conclusion through the efforts of a public defender.